Hello, and welcome to SciShow Talk Show, that day on SciShow where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff. Today we're talking to BJ Kirschhofer of Polar Bears International. You're the director of field operations. Correct. So I imagine that you spend a lot of time quite cold. I do. It's, I'm always in the cold. I'm waiting for them to send me to a beach somewhere. Uh, we don't really keep the polar bears there. No, we don't. No. <laughs> uh, what's the southernmost polar bear? First you know, off, easy question. That is a great question. James Bay is considered the southernmost polar bears. Uh, they're actually not that far north of the U.S. border. Huh. I want to say it's uh, probably three or four hundred miles. And or so. James Bay is Canada. Canada in the Hudson Bay, that kind oh, of okay. lobe that comes off the bottom there, yeah. Yeah. and they do all right. You know, they don't <laughs> mind. That's it. An they, okay they bask life. in the sun. I bet that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why can't a polar bear go more south? Well, their food source isn't very far south. Okay. Their food source it's not is that seals. they get too hot. No, you know they you know, they they actually uh, spend some time southern Hudson Bay, that James Bay mm -hmm. population. It can get quite warm there into the 80s and Fahrenheit okay. in the summertime. So that's pretty hot. They don't do a lot then. A lot of lounging around. <laughs> but the seals aren't around. Exactly. And okay. the sea ice, most importantly. And why is sea ice so important to polar bears? So polar bears can swim, but not as good as seals. So they need <laughs> they're not going to catch the... Yeah, they're not yeah. going to catch them in the, in the ocean there. So they need that, that uh, sea ice as kind of a hunting platform. And is a polar bear uh, hunt basically sitting at a hole in the ice and waiting for a seal needing to breathe? Yeah, so that's one of the ways they do it, still hunting. It seems They'll very just, mean. It seems terrible. And just think, <laughs> being a seal. You're like, just like, I, should I breathe or should I get eaten by a polar bear? Yeah, your next breath could be your last. Yeah. But you never really know. Because maybe the polar bear is full. Yeah, exactly. Or just not around. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the only way they hunt, though? No, so uh, in places where there might be more water in between chunks of ice, mm -hmm. they, they do jump in and they'll swim real quietly in between the flows oh. and then pop up out of the water and, uh, and jump after seals that way. That's pretty exciting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a seal. Unless you're a seal. Whoa. Yeah. Well, now I have a little more respect for polar bears. I thought maybe they just like sat there at basically the ice, ice vending machine and it was just yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. No, they do some, you know, some active hunting too. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do when you're up there in, in various places, I assume? Yeah, so, uh, so we've got a couple different field programs that, uh, where we're doing research. So I get to go out on those projects um, and help guide, help guide those, mm -hmm. uh, help do all the logistics to get us up to those places. Polar Bears International also has some, uh, uh, some streaming programs, kind of like this one that we're doing here today, where we reach into classrooms all over the oh, world cool. and, and talk to kids about polar bears. That and is so, also the field, different field. But we do it from the field, yes. Yeah. Oh, so we, awesome. we have this mobile studio, kind of like this room right here. But on a but bus. We, we put it on a, on a monster truck. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. With a bus, you'd need more than a bus. Yeah, polar bears might get into the bus, so we <laughs> had to get it up off the ground. Yeah, so it's, it's a really neat program. We call it Tender Connections. Nice. And we, you know, answer kids' questions about polar bears. It's, it's the polar really great. polar bears around? Like, yeah, they're all they... outside the window while we're doing this. We have cameras on the outside, so we're able to That's mix amazing. this show. That's the best show. It's, it's pretty good. Why I don't know. This is a great show. Okay. We like this. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, your science is... I assume a big part of it is just knowing where the bears are, what they're doing, how they range. It's it's kind of like I have a hard time imagining the way that the North Pole actually is, um, which is it's all very close together up there, like Russia and the U.S. and Norway, not actually that far apart. In our minds, these things seem very far apart because we don't go up there. It's hard. It's expensive. It's unpleasant. But for a polar bear, maybe easier to move around than we think. Yeah, totally. I mean, they're built for that environment. And uh, and I think it feels, for us humans, if you are to travel from, let's say, Alaska over to Norway, mm -hmm. you know, our airports are going to take us all the way down to Anchorage, you know, mm -hmm. all the way around, and then you go back up. But, you know, if you had some sort of uh, big jet. airplane, yeah, exactly, uh, <laughs> you would just go over the top, and really right. distances aren't that far. And that's how the polar bears do it. They just, they just start walking. So I kind of imagine polar bears as like an Alaska-Canada thing. Yeah. But they're, they're, I assume they're also in Russia? Yeah, they're, they're all around the entire yeah. circumpolar uh, region there. Do those populations cross? Like, are there sort of isolated specific populations? Yeah, so we've, we've kind of got it broken into these, these 19 subpopulations all okay. over. And that's mostly for management, management though. Right. You know, um, so that we can Think control harvest yeah. for the places that do harvest. Or uh, mm -hmm. when you're researching, you know, it kind of helps you put boundaries when around. When you say harvest, you mean hunting? Yeah, hunting. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, there are still some places that you can hunt polar bears, um, uh, many places you cannot. 
uh, but yeah, so so we kind of break them into these places, and then researchers will concentrate on mm -hmm. these different areas. So Southern Hudson Bay, um, that place James Bay, there's just one there's one population in there, and then not too far over there to the east is the place where we stream and talk to kids. That's the Western Hudson Bay. How far in your studies has a polar bear traveled? Ooh, that's a great question. So polar bears have a home range roughly the size of Texas. Like one polar bear? One polar bear. So it could wander that in a year, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. But on the far other extreme. My home range is like five minute drive. Exactly, mine too. Like I try <laughs> to keep mine short. You know, sometimes I gotta go a long ways to work, but yeah. I like to keep it, keep it small. But we've got some other polar bears over in Norway uh, that just stay in, in a fjord system. They'll stay in a okay. really a relatively small space. So, mm -hmm. I mean, huge variation uh, in this animal's you know, behavior. Is there a circumstance in which a polar bear is gonna leave its like basically be like, I'm going to immigrate to Russia now. I'm tired of America. There's too many polar bears here. You know, we've, we we put radio collars on a few polar bears. We're only able to put only them. Only a few. Only a few. Uh, there's maybe about 25,000 polar bears. Uh, mm -hmm. Radio collars are pretty expensive. Yeah. They're expensive to deploy. You know, I think at most uh, a, a different organization or, or governing body will put in about 20 yeah. collars about a year roughly. And what's, what's the greater expense? The radio collar itself or the process of putting it on a giant bear? That's it right there. <laughs> the process is incredibly expensive. Yeah. Yeah, but the collar is like $3,000. Yeah. So, so that's not cheap. But you gotta basically hunt, like, uh, like I assume helicopter hunt a polar bear with a dart gun. Pretty much, Wait yeah. for it to fall asleep because you don't want to mess with a not quite asleep polar bear. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> so. and then you slip a polar bear, uh, collar on, but we only call our female polar bears. It turns out uh, male polar bears kind of have a cone-shaped neck and head. Huh. Their necks are quite necks thick. Are too big. Yeah, and their heads are maybe a little too small, and so the collars just slip off. Man, so, that was a big waste of money. I know, right? Yeah. But we're working, so there's some really neat work being done on ear, uh, new ear tags okay. and um, some other ways of attaching tags that may help us um, understand more about what, what the males are doing out mm -hmm. there. And then once you track, we start tracking a female polar bear, you're obviously getting data about where they're going, how they're hunting, uh, what else can you find out? Yeah, so the early days of callers, it was more just location, where they are going, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting. You know, we can overlay that with sea ice information and other things and understand how they're using the habitat. But now they're starting to fix other sensors onto these callers. Mm. The callers are, are pretty big, you know, the animal's large, so they can they can hold this big, the big collar. They don't so mind so much. They don't mind so much. If they, you know, they put them on so they're loose enough where if a bear really wants to get it off, they'll shuck the collar, and that mm. happens. You know, you'll get a couple of them a year maybe that push push the collars right off. Um, but we can put uh, light sensors, temperature sensors. Uh, we have accelerometers on some of these collars. Um, so we can tell a lot of information right. about what's going on out there. See that moment when it lunges at the seal? Yeah, exactly. And that's one of our big projects. So we've got this, uh, cool. this uh, project where we're looking at dens. Yeah, where does, so polar bears don't hibernate. They don't. But they do have dens where they have their kids. Yeah, so so through evolution, polar bears have kind of figured out that um, it's easier to raise a cub outside of the body than inside of the body. So gestation's pretty short, hmm. and they give birth to a one pound cub. <gasps> so the thing is tiny. That's very different. It's very different. From other bears. Yeah, other bears, and then maybe also, I mean, yeah, for other mammals as yeah. well. I mean, this thing, uh, birth like weight. like a kangaroo joey. Yeah, yeah, birth weight compared to mother's weight is, is crazy. Yeah. The, the difference there. So they need that den. That den is almost like an extension of the womb. This is a hairless. That's fascinating. Yeah, a little fur ball Are or non fur ball. Are pandas a little like that? I feel like baby pandas look useless and tiny. You know what? You're stretching my knowledge here. I'm not really sure <laughs> on pandas. I'd like to go over to China and yeah, check them tell, out. But, yeah, tell me all that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so the, the den is super important to the female polar yeah. bears and you know the entire species. They raise them up, they spend a couple months in there and uh, grow from a pound to nearly 20 pounds. In two months? Yeah, before they... Blubber, uh, man. I know, right? They're eating like <laughs> butter in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I imagine that mother polar bear milk is nutritious. It's fairly nutritious. It's like 32% milk fat, so it is like melted butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, have you ever brought any home? Put it on toasts. You know, I haven't. How it goes? Uh, I'm not sure many that have, but uh, yeah. I imagine the process of milking a polar bear is not is you know in the same way as collaring one might be fairly expensive. Yeah. So there. So we do look at. Uh, there are some people that actually do milk polar bears, but a lot of that is, uh, of course, they're sleeping. <laughs> uh, but it's for looking at. <laughs> you toxins. think you're making a joke? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, for looking at toxins. 
Okay. So there's, uh, believe it or not, a lot of these industrial sure. toxins have migrated to the north. And, uh, and they bioaccumulate in the mm -hmm. fat. And so polar bears are at the top of the food chain, mm -hmm. and that's where the toxins end up. And so that's one way that we can understand. You, know, you look in the blood, and that's one inf piece of information, but also like what's going straight into the cubs. Right, exactly. Wow. Huh. <laughs> and also somebody had to figure out that it was 40 four percent yeah 34 percent milk, milk fat yeah someone had to so when you're pulling up this giant monster truck video studio bus do you you know where the bears are going to be because of the collars so or are there just areas where they yeah, do, so their, we're in a do really, their stuff we're in an interesting place yeah. uh hudson bay unlike many other places where polar bears live they have seasonal ice mm -hmm. um the ice melts entirely in the summer. So all those bears are out there hunting all winter long. Right now they're hunting into late spring here. But pretty soon it's gonna, temperatures are going to rise, the whole place melts, and they have to go on shore. And this is why there's polar bear tourism where we go. This is where people right. yeah, have been you know, most able to access polar bears. Also scientists as well. Churchill's been a great place to do science on polar bears because we know they're, where they're going to be. So I can go to Churchill and see polar bears? You can go to Churchill and see polar bears. How much? It's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but there's uh, it's probably your best bet on seeing polar bears right. anywhere on the planet. And there's like a colony that's sort of like socially together. Yeah, so you know most things that you read will say that they're a, they're a solitary species, mm -hmm. you know, out there wandering all by themselves. And Churchill uh, and the rest of the Hudson Bay, when they come ashore, there's there's no food, there's no breeding. Um, there's really not much to do. So they actually can be pretty so social. You'll see uh, right. large groups of males hanging out together and they'll get up and they'll, they'll play fight. You know, it's, it, we think it's almost like they're testing their skills for right. later on. Mm -hmm. And so we will see some sparring that time of year. Um, what are they eating? Tourists? Mm, well, occasionally. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, uh, nothing. Yeah. Polar bears have developed or they've evolved to uh, be this an animal that can fast for a huge period of time. Mm -hmm. So those adult females, um, when they go into their den, it could be eight months before they come out and then have another meal. So that's some of the longest. That and they're find. feeding cubs that whole time. And they're feeding cubs the whole time. Wow. So they are able to eat fat right off of seals. It basically, if they're in good health, will get put right onto their fat stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, you know, they can use that as a reserve. They'll just keep eating, eating, eating. We, we wouldn't consider any polar bear obese. <laughs> there's no, there's just, no too much food. There's no too much food. Yeah. They just keep eating. Because gonna, you're going to have six months where there's no food at all. So yeah. eat as much as you can. Exactly. So obviously life is hard for a polar bear. Is it easy to tell when life is getting harder for a polar bear? Yeah, so global warming definitely isn't good for polar bears. Yeah. What we're seeing in the most well-studied places is that there's less sea ice. Mm -hmm. And with less sea ice, they have less access to seals, their food source, and then you have skinnier bears. And so, you know, we can look at that. We can track body condition over time. Mm -hmm. Part of that's part of the collaring efforts. You know, we can actually look at these bears. It's like where a giant Fitbit. It is. No. Yeah, well, yeah, the collars are, are a bit of a giant Fitbit, but also, you know, all of these different polar bear populations where people are looking at polar bears, they're taking the same measurements. Right. And they have been for years polar and years. Polar bear community is not a, not a super huge community of people? No, it's a, it's a yeah. tight community. Cool. It's, that kind of makes it kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so you got these researchers doing the same basic measurements across all these different populations and so we can look at body condition over time and over a long period of time and see mm -hmm. that yes most polar bear populations. How do you weigh a polar bear? That's a good question. So once it's sleeping, they're always sleeping when we do all this stuff, we, uh, we roll them onto a... How uh, many people? And it, when you say we... Well, yeah, so I actually haven't done this. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the other we. You yeah. know, it's all these other we, the researchers. Humanity. Humanity. These, these re researchers that are out there, and they will take a polar bear and they'll roll it onto a tarp and set up a tripod above the polar bear and use a chain hoist, which is usually used for uh, hauling maybe, I don't know, something heavy, picking up something heavy. Yeah. And they, they hoist up the whole bear and use a scale that's hanging from the tripod. Right. There you go. That's you got to know how much the bear weighs. Yeah, you do. That's one of the big measurements for sure. And then the bear wakes up and it's like, what happened? What happened? I yeah. got a new necklace. Tattoo. Very, I got a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Earrings. It's, it's like spring break, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So you've got a lot of different sensors in these collars. Like, I don't even know how like a phone gets built, but at least there's like a large ecosystem. I know that if enough people pay money into like building a phone, people will build nicer phones. Who builds a 
polar bear accelerometer collar. So yeah, so I think that's one of the, the big kind of gaps in engineering right now. Yeah. You mentioned your phones, a ton of people want them, people are going to pay money for that. Uh, wildlife research, you know, there isn't as much money there. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the technology has been a little slow in the callers. They're coming around though, um, and, uh, and the accelerometers are much like a Fitbit now in right. polar bears, but we don't really know what those activities are. I'm, I imagine the people at Fitbit were able to put Fitbit on mm -hmm. people and then have them walk, ride a bike, walk upstairs, <laughs> and then right. you know correlate whatever the Fitbit is seeing. You just get the data back and yeah. you're like, what did that polar bear do? We have no idea. We have some idea. Yeah. But, so we're putting cameras in mm -hmm. front of polar bear dens because we know that polar bears are gonna be there. Mm -hmm. And we can hit the record button and leave. And then when the polar bears are doing their activities at the, at the uh, right. den site, we can correlate all that stuff back to their collar. Right. That's cool. What you need is a drone camera Ooh, that yeah. just follows around the collar and watches it all the time. Yeah, let's do it. Solar powered. I'm yeah. sure that that would work. Yeah, for sure. Half the year. <laughs> half the year. Well, the half that polar bears are doing stuff, right? What do they do when it's dark all the time? They're, they're living. They're hunting. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm I, so glad I'm not a seal. It'd just like terrifying. hanging out. It's dark all the time. Yep. At any moment, the water could just explode in a fury of fur and teeth. Paws and claws, man. Well, <laughs> God bless you for being a human. Yep. Okay, well, I feel like I've learned a great deal about polar bears. I thought I knew a fair amount, but I did not know that they came out little tiny babies. It must be very nice for childbirthing. Yeah. From what I've seen, it's nice when your babies are smaller compared to your body size. But I also want to introduce you to an arctic animal. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these in the wild, but you're going to see one very close up right now. Jesse from Animal Wonders is going to bring us a cutie. This is Cass the Arctic Fox. It is! Here he is in his beautiful winter fur. Yeah. yeah. Is it starting to come off? It looks like it's starting to come off. It is. Around his bum haunches area here. Yeah. It, it, it's, he actually has lost a whole layer of it. it it's usually about right. an inch thicker right there. Um, so he shed a lot of the guard hairs out and then he ha still has another layer to come off there. But you can, you can start seeing it. Hello, Cass. Let me say hello to him. Here you go. Yeah. You want some treats? Um, and the Arctic fox and polar bears live in the same places, hang they out do. together they even? They do. They, inter they have a lot of interaction. Um, they are both uh, predators, and so they're going to be going after the same types of food. Uh, these guys are omnivores, so they will eat huh. other things that they come across, but they'll trail polar bears and eat and scavenge off of their kills because the polar bears are eating mostly the fat, the blubber there, and they'll eat all that, and they'll leave a lot of the carcass, and that's where these guys come along, mm. and, and they'll clean up the rest of it along with other scavengers. I bet you like little mice and stuff, too. Eats lemmings. These guys yeah, will eat that. hares. These guys will eat um, eggs and, and shorebirds. Um, yeah, they yeah. eat lots of little things. However you make it work. you got. They'll even eat polar bear poop. <laughs> Wow, because yeah. the polar bears aren't efficient enough yeah. at turning I mean, all that stuff into good food? There's still nutrients there. Oh, you know, to each their own. <laughs> it works. I mean, it's a hard place to survive. I, I drink cow yeah. milk. Yeah, yeah. I think weird. that's real gross. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, gross, why do you do that? Ew. <laughs> hey, that's how I was raised. So do, you, do they swim? Do they go out on the sea ice with the polar bears? There are different, not really. There, um, there are different uh, populations of these guys, and some have, have had more success around the coastal area, and so they have learned to swim from like, island to island. Mm -hmm. um, but most of them are going to stay um, on land and, and find their... <laughs> right. Does he smell funny? Yeah, get away. Uh, I, I find that foxes uh, have two simultaneous competing emotions. One is extreme curiosity, and the other is like extreme anxiety yeah fear yeah. fear yeah so they're both curious and fearful at the exact same time yeah and it just like cute. switches back and forth yeah 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 um look how curious he is right you now tell when a polar bear is swimming with their accelerometer like is that a specific signal that you get yeah so we can definitely tell when they're swimming and there's also uh sometimes on the collar we can tell when they're in water there's a, a sensor for that oh, as well cool yeah so those two things together can yeah and you can tell like how long a polar bear goes for a swim yeah, so our longest swimming polar bear was something like 10 days. Whoa! It was, yeah, it was a really big swim. Like, at, like without getting out of the water? Without getting out of the water. It was uh, northern Alaska there, and it had to swim back to shore. As, as the climate warms, we have less and less sea ice, and that sea ice is pulled away from... 10 days? The, Whoa, and it just it like kept going. Sleep? like a 
the what finish happens? line just yeah. kept going. Exactly. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of what's happened is uh, yeah. over a, maybe even the lifespan of one polar bear. You know this uh, this this uh, sea ice line is keeps moving back, and so they're faced with a choice: Do I stay on sea ice? and yeah. continue to hunt, or do I at some point here need to get off right. and go to land? And so this one made the choice that it had to go back to land. It was it was a, something like a 10-day swim. I mean, a really long period of time. Yeah. My goodness, I wouldn't wow. want to no, swim these, for 10 days. These guys could not I don't think track they could go. <laughs> a polar bear swimming for 10 days. No, no. there's like, like no. minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're a minute long swimmer. These yeah, when you said 10, I was thinking hours, honestly. I thought that it was gonna be 10 hours. Ten yeah, days. yeah, 10 days, okay. yeah, a really long time. So these guys have okay. other uh, changes or things that they're seeing because of climate change, right? The yeah. red fox are moving further north. Yep, yep. Um, that's what their challenge is. I mean, they can survive in warmer temperatures. It's just the, the invasive species. So red foxes are expanding their range up farther north because they can. They can survive up there, and there's lots of food that they can go after. And Arctic foxes are actually one of those things that they can eat. Right. Um, mm. So they'll um, push as... these guys out of their territory. They'll Anytime a red fox in an Arctic fox have been seen interacting in the wild. The Arctic fox, I mean, yeah, the Arctic fox has died. Um, the wow. red fox is, has won, and usually if they have a den of kits, the, are they a little the smaller? kits are dying too. They look a little smaller. They're smaller, they're way less, I, I guess you would say athletic. Yeah. Red foxes have longer legs, um, they have mm. a bigger jump, uh, they're faster, they're, they're just, they're quicker on everything. Cass actually has a companion back at Animal Wonders, a red fox. Oh, his friend. <laughs> um, they grew up together and so they're, they're like siblings um, and there's, there's no like aggression no. like that. But the red, red fox can jump. She's all over the enclosure yeah. where he's like, I need like steps <laughs> to get up to the <laughs> I, <can't windows. laughs> I can't have long legs. They would get very cold. So do you see a lot of Arctic foxes when you're dealing with the polar bears? Yeah, so ebbs and flows. It seems okay. like their populations build, 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 and then they yep. crash. Yep, and yep. They the lemming, they, they follow the lemming ups and yeah. downs to the boom and bust, yeah. So we saw a ton of Arctic fox this last year, uh, and we're seeing more and more red fox up there yeah. as well. And Are you we, seeing any interaction between the two? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. unfortunately, not so good, like it's you described. Fighting. Yeah. yeah. Not like, not like I, hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm not a lot of handshakes out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to kill yeah. you or go away. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. a couple interactions over a couple of years, um, okay. for okay. sure. We saw a ton of lemmings this year as well. There's uh -huh. lemmings yeah. everywhere. <laughs> In fact, they were so thick, we watched a polar bear catch a lemming as well. So, there's fox everywhere. They're catching lemmings. And, and the polar bear oh, was basically just like, you're annoying me. Yeah, exactly. You're not real food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine, like, he, right. he probably you expelled need, more calories like catching it. Getting it yeah. than yeah, actually than it, got Yeah, than a little snicker bar would have <laughs> given him. Yeah. But. Hi, buddy. Do you want some treats now? Yeah. Here. He's like, no, I have a knee to smell. Oh, yeah. He smells like polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that. What do you think? When, it's was, yours? Uh, when did you end your most recent trip? Uh, just got back in mid March. So. Just recently. Yeah, not too long ago. Oh, man. Can you imagine trying to start? I mean, like, you've been in the extreme weather. It's like, can you imagine these animals out there surviving? You know, that's, that's constantly in my mind when I go out. Yeah. Because most of what we're doing, you know, the, the research itself takes setting up equipment, whatever, mm -hmm. all that stuff is, it takes no time, you know? Almost everything we're doing is trying to stay alive. You know, you're packing all your down stuff to bring it all the way up there, all your yeah. boots, you're eating, you're doing all these things, and you look out across this landscape, and, and you, like, I honestly ask myself, how can anything survive out yeah. there? Yeah. You know, some places are super flat in the Arctic, and it's just blowing snow and ice, and everything's frozen, yeah. and it's super cold, and we wouldn't last a day out no. there. Yeah. No. You know, and, so, and these critters are out there cruising. Well, and also humans have lived in places like that. They it's have. not like the uh, amazing, and, and still do, yep. the amazing thing is the amount of food in a seal, you right. know? It's, a, it's actually a really calorie dense area if you count that border with, with the ocean there. Yep. Yeah, and that's and, where the and whole, whales too. And that's where that whole ecosystem is, right? So yeah. we're on we're on the surface, we're looking across this frozen landscape. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, the entire ecosystem essentially is down below. It's yeah. the yeah. little algae and then the little things that feed on that, the mm -hmm. fish, the seals, and then the polar bears. Yeah. And Arctic fox. 
<laughs> and to make it up there, you got to have a lot of blubber. And you do. blubber is good food. It's good food. It's super dense. <laughs> he's doing really, I'm really proud of him. Look how amazing no good. he's doing. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm glad that you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he the, he's been on. This is the third time he's been on, and yeah. the other two times it was a lot more of the startles. Right. It, mm. you, you, like the, the I'm curious, and then the, the oh. fear kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he laid down. He's he's like this is all curious mode. Let's see this tripod. <laughs> Good job. He's eating food, which is always a great sign. Yeah. Means he's comfortable. Good job, buddy. Mm, sweet potatoes. So, yep, sweet potatoes. Some little kibbles, dog kibbles, and some apple in here. Mm. Yeah, and so these guys are everywhere that polar bears are. Are they in Iceland? Are polar bears in Iceland? Because these guys... Not Iceland. Okay. I, yeah. I thought that these guys were the only um, land mammal in Iceland. Maybe. Um, and they're hunted there. Um, I mean, I could see why these guys would be hunted. Yeah, yeah. Scandinavia, I think, is the biggest... Or wait, they're the ones that protect them. Um, yeah. But there's there's... Some populations are just exploding, um, and I believe that's in Iceland, um, and so they are regulated. Um, there's hunting seasons, trapping seasons. Um, these guys are coming into their towns and, you know, becoming becoming mm -hmm. pests. Just but adorable raccoons. <laughs> overall, uh, their population is declining, hmm. and that's mainly due to the red fox, which is very unfortunate, because yeah. the red foxes have basically the rest of the world. Right. Leave, <laughs> leave the polar to these guys. Yeah. Hey, Cass, thanks very much for coming on the show. I know that it's a little bit stressful. <laughs> Did you see? He's like, I'm going to jump down. No, it's too scary. It's way too scary. <laughs> Mama doesn't want me to do that. <laughs> BJ, this was a fascinating conversation. Um, you know a lot about polar bears, and I want to know more. We can go forever. And Jesse, as always, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thanks for having us. If you want to see more of what Jesse's up to, you can go to youtube.com slash animalwondersmontana, where she has a show about her... Well, wildlife okay. and uh, the life that they live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rescuing them and, and uh, sharing interesting things about their lives and them as a species. And just, I don't know, I get excited about animals and I want to share it with you guys. And where can we learn more about Polar Bears International? Polarbearsinternational.org. Boom. That's easy. That's it. I bet there's good and photos. can we watch those? We have great photos. We can watch those episodes that you yep. do? All our That's episodes so are on their archives, so great. come check us out. Cool. Nice. And thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. It's real fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad.